Hi everyone, my name is Christian and um, I'm here to talk with you about energy. Energy is really important and energy does um, dominate our daily lives. And uh, energy is difficult to understand because usually energy has to do with really large numbers which are difficult to understand. And uh, you hear a lot about energy in different ways, electricity, heat, mobility and everything else. And in this set of videos, uh, which are to come, I would like to talk about energy in order to understand better what is going on in our day-to-day -day lives. So today we're going to talk about two things. The first is uh, understanding energy. We would like to introduce a unit which we all can understand because energy comes in many different units in huge quantities, huge numbers, small numbers, and it's very easy to mix things up. So first of all, understanding energy. Let's talk about an example. Do we have enough electricity to substitute all our cars with electric vehicles? Now that's an interesting question because when you talk to people somewhere on the street and ask them, could we exchange all our cars into electric cars? Maybe a lot of them would say, it's not possible, we don't have enough electricity. Now let's look at Germany for this example. And it's not much different in other countries. Uh, but what is the amount of energy which we use in Germany per year? And if you look this up, you Google it, uh, and what you will find is a number, something like this, 12 EJ. Now, that's the first unit, which is quite difficult to understand. It means exajoule, so 12, and then you have loads and loads of zeros in your number. It's a huge number which actually is very difficult to understand. But that's the total consumption of Germany, including electricity, including heat, including mobility and everything else. So it's the energy which I need to run the country of Germany per year. Now, some part of this energy we consume in form of electricity. And uh, obviously that has to be less because not all the energy we do consume in electricity, some of the energy we consume by directly burning fossil fuels like cars, heating and so on. So what's the energy consumption in Germany? If you look that number up on Google, you will find a number something like this, 545. There's another unit, terawatt hours. Maybe that's a unit you might have heard before. So same thing, it's, it's even difficult to understand. Is it actually larger or smaller compared to 12 exajoule? You do need a calculator to understand these numbers. Now, if we look at uh, the petrol consumption in Germany for all cars, I'm not talking about trucks and buses and so on. So let's only look at, at cars. Uh, the consumption of petrol in Germany uh, if you look that up, will add up in Germany per year to, now here's an, yet another unit of uh, energy, 38 megatons of oil equivalent. Now that's another unit which is used internationally quite a lot, um, megatons of oil equivalent. So one ton of oil equivalent is the energy which is contained in one ton of oil. Mm, difficult to say how much it really is. So all of this makes it really difficult to, to talk about energy. And what we would like to do in the for the following videos as well, I would like to use another unit. But before we do this, here is uh, some other uh, energy units which, which are used internationally. So the, the basic SI unit for energy is Joule. And one Joule is one watt second. So power times time. And uh, a kilowatt hour is maybe a unit you're used to. One kilowatt hour is 3.6 million joule. So these two are closely related. Now, other units which are used, which are not SI conform, that's for example, the calorie. We use the calorie a lot when we talk about food, but it's an amount of energy contained within the food. And then we have already talked about tons of oil equivalent. Um, another unit which is used mainly in Germany is tons of coal equivalent. Now that's the amount of energy which is contained in one ton of coal. 
Um, that's a different amount of energy than one ton of oil, so it's really confusing. In England, you use the British thermal unit um, as an energy unit and so on. So it's, it's very confusing. So we would like to change this and we would like to use a unit um, which is easy to understand because it breaks down into smaller numbers, which we can get a feeling for. We would like to use kilowatt hours per person per day. Now, let's look at this uh, cycler here in front of us. Uh, if he mm, rides his bike, he can produce a power of about 100 watt. So a typical light bulb you would see burning. And as long as he um, is, is um, pedaling, you will see the light. And if he stops, you know, the light turns off, of course. Now, if he does this for 10 hours at a time, so 100 watts times 10 hours, that gives you a thousand watt hours, which is one kilowatt hour. So a kilowatt hour is the amount of energy which a human person can produce uh, in one days of hard labor. Now, what can you do with a kilowatt hour or how much energy is it actually? So 10 hours of hard work. Uh, in Germany, one kilowatt hour is about 30 cent on your electricity bill. In other countries, usually it's a bit cheaper. Um, and one kilowatt hour of energy is contained in about 100 milliliters of petrol. So one liter of petrol contains 10 kilowatt hours. And depending on how expensive petrol is in Germany, at the moment petrol is about two euros per liter, you would see that one kilowatt hour energy contained in petrol costs you about 20 cent. Electricity is more expensive. Now, <clears throat> this, is a, this is an amount of unit, a portion of unit, which we can understand quite well because we have a feeling for the amount of energy which is contained in one kilowatt hour. What can we do with one kilowatt hour typically? So typically we can, um, one, one load of laundry with 60 degrees approximately takes one kilowatt hour of energy. If you cook one meal, uh, if you take a hot shower for about three minutes, or if you have a light bulb on for 10 hours or an LED bulb on for 60 hours, all of these con uh, consume about one kilowatt hour. So a kilowatt hour is a, is a portion which we will use as a unit now. Now what I would like to do is the following. I want to take the total amount of energy which Germany consumes, the 12 exajoule, and distribute it among all Germans equally. We have about 80 million people living in Germany. So I take this energy, distribute it among all of the Germans equally, and then divide it by 365, and uh, to find out how many kilowatt hours each person consumes per day. And if you do the same thing with our electricity consumption and our petrol consumption, we can compare these numbers. Now let's do this. Um, our total energy consumption is approximately 120 kilowatt hours per person per day. Is that much or is it not much? We'll, we'll see in a moment when we compare this with other countries. But our electricity consumption in Germany, including the industry, it's not only our private uh, electricity consumption, it's the total electricity consumption in Germany um, industry and private homes is approximately 19 kilowatt hours per person per day. So you do see that most of the energy we don't consume in form of electricity, it's rather consumed by burning fossil fuels directly. Now the amount of petrol which we use in Germany per person per day is approximately 15 kilowatt hours, which corresponds to about 1.5 liters of petrol for each person, children and so on. So <clears throat> we see that the consumption of electricity and the consumption of petrol is in the same order of magnitude and some part of our total consumption. Now, exchanging 47 million cars in Germany and by um, battery electric vehicles, how much electricity will we consume if we do this for all cars exchanged to electric cars, we will have four kilowatt hours per person per day. So our electricity or our energy consumption has gone down by quite a bit. 
clearly because an, an electric car is more efficient than a, a combustion car. And four kilowatt hours is an increase of um, electricity consumption in Germany by about 20%. Now, that does sound reasonable uh, within the next few decades. Uh, in reality, what we have to do, we have to reduce the number, the number of cars and the cars which are left over have to be um, electric cars, essentially. And then let's say if we halve the number of cars, we will have an increased electricity consumption of about 10%. So that should be doable in an, uh, a country like Germany to increase electricity production by 10% over the next few years. Now, using this, um, this energy unit, makes it easy to compare us with other countries and as well. And now what I want to do is look at our typical energy consumption worldwide and in Germany. Now, the first thing which we have to talk about quickly is we, we talk about different energies, primary, final and useful energy. So what are these words? What, what are the meanings of these uh, different words? So the primary energy is the total energy consumption, for example, of a country. It means the energy contained in the coal, which goes into the power plants. It means the, the oil, which we dig out of the ground, in which we use the natural gas, but also uranium, biomass, and obviously wind and solar power as well. So it's the total energy consumption. And um, the final energy is the energy which actually comes to us, which we then use. So there's a lot of losses, especially in power plants, before the energy actually arrives at my home. So final energy is the electricity which I use at home. It's the petrol which I put in my car. Um, it's the fuel oil which I put in my house and the gas, um, the natural gas which I use for heating, for example. Now then we have again losses in the machines, uh, in the car, for example, you have quite quite a lot of losses, heat losses, and then you get the useful energy, which is what we want. We want movement by, by a car, we want heat by a heater, and we want um, computer power when we use a computer. And this is what we want, but it's difficult to calculate the useful energy. Uh, but the two values for primary energy and final energy are the ones which you find statistically. And the number I told you before, in Germany, 120 kilowatt hours per person per day is our primary energy use. Now, let's compare countries in the world. If you look at this chart, if you look at the left side, you see the unit kilowatt hours per person per day. And um, let's see where Germany is. You know, the dark blue in the middle, if you find that, uh, that's Germany and you can see Germany has a per capita consumption per day of 120 kilowatt hours. Now if we go to the right, you know, we see Austria, Russia, Australia, USA, uh, up to Canada. And uh, these countries actually have twice the energy consumption per person per day. And if you go to the left of Germany, you now we, we come to poorer countries, essentially all the way going down to Nepal, Pakistan, Ghana, Bangladesh. So what you can clearly see is that our energy consumption is very closely related to our income. Um, essentially, tell me how much you earn and I tell you how much energy you consume. And even in, the, in, in private, it's the same thing. Your energy consumption mainly depends on your income. So if you look at countries like China, a little bit left of Germany, China is at about 70, 80 kilowatt hours per person per day. Uh, and if you look at India, um, even further to the left, you are down at 20 kilowatt hours per person per day. And if the standard of living increases in these countries, which we all hope, um, at the same time, energy consumption will increase as well. And we talk about a big chunk of uh, the, the human population in the world, which are essentially left of Germany, and uh, they have to catch up in their energy consumption. So the question is, where is all this energy going to come from in the future? Now, let's go back to Germany. Uh, I told you we have our uh, primary energy consumption of 120 kilowatt hours uh, in Germany. 
and here you can see the the um, 120 kilowatt hours and the 85 kilowatt hours is what i call the final energy consumption in germany let's see what we use the energy for in germany so if we start on top industry business public hand and so on uses about 45 percent of the energy the transport of goods is another 10 percent passenger transport is 20 percent heating of houses is another 20% and private electricity is only 5%. So about um, yeah, heating, passenger transport and private electricity is something which we have directly under our control. So about 45% of the energy consumption we can directly um, change if we, if we want, especially with passenger transport. But the electricity at home is a smaller part. So you can reduce your electricity but uh, you have more chance to um, reduce your, uh, your energy consumption by, for example, heating and passenger transport. Industry, business, production of goods, transport of goods. Well, the feeling is, you know, these, that's the others. The others are using the energy. I'm not using it. But that's not true because there's always products which in the end I will consume. I'm driving the car which a company is producing for me. I'm using the computer and so on. Um, I'm eating the food. So all of the energy which someone else is consuming, actually they're consuming for me in order to get the goods. So uh, essentially it is my energy which I have to put on, on, my, um, on my account. Now, <clears throat> where does the energy in Germany at the moment come from? The question is, what's the part of renewable energies of our total energy production at the moment. And sometimes you hear numbers of almost 50%, but you have to be careful. That's the electricity production in Germany. We have almost 50% renewable energies by the production of electricity, but we have seen electricity is only a small part of our energy production, energy consumption. Now, if you look at this, here's the picture. Uh, at the bottom, you can see the renewable energies they make up uh, 18 kilowatt hours. So only 15% of our energy at the moment comes from renewable energies. If you look at the other uh, sources, hard coal, brown coal, natural gas, mineral oil, and a little bit of nuclear power left in Germany. So essentially 85% um, or 80% of our energy comes from fossil fuels still. And if we now look at the renewable energy part, where, what, what is actually, how does renewable energy divide into different sources? On the top, we see photovoltaics, 1.7 kilowatt hours, uh, solar thermal energy, 0.3 kilowatt hours, wind power, 4.2. So photovoltaics or solar power and wind power together produce about six kilowatt hours, which is 5% in Germany of our total energy um, consumption. Then we have uh, a little bit of um, hydropower and we have a bigger chunk of biomass, but biomass mainly um, we have uh, wood for firing for heating, which is directly burned for heating. And then we have a little bit of um, biofuels, geothermal um, heat pumps and waste energy. So what we can see here is that we still do have quite a way to go until we reach 100% um, renewable energies in Germany and it doesn't look much different in other countries. So this should give you the first overview of energy and our energy consumption. And in the next videos, we will look at how can we produce enough renewable energies to satisfy our energy needs. Thank you.